Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. So I'm going to show you how to paint a very smooth sky. We're going to do this wet on wet and then next thing is how to paint these trees uh, to make them look like they're covered in snow. Also wet on wet and I'll share with you how to lift the colors as well. After that we're going to focus on the cabin. How to paint a distressed wood old cabin also covered in snow. A full class is available on Patreon. So this is my online school where I teach how to paint with watercolors. There's a full class available. I also share a sketch for download, uh, a reference image, and of course a full list of art supplies. But not just that, also tips and links to many other classes, uh, references, anything you need to improve your watercolor skills. So let's get to it. Very limited uh, color palette. So I'm going to use basically these colors, maybe with an addition of some burnt sienna or quin red, but this is all you really need. So uh, not even exactly the same colors because I'm using indigo. It's fine if you go with Payne's gray, for example. Maybe you don't have indigo. And then for the follow blue red shade, you can use cobalt blue instead or, or, or ultramarine. Uh, I want to show you my sample piece. This is like a very quickly done sample sample piece and I actually like it. I like this test piece a lot. Even I kept it much lighter and I was testing if it looks good if I lift the colors for the trees and I really like it actually. Um, to think of the composition for the trees behind the cabin um, and um, this is all applied like heavy cream and cream top like ratio between water and paint and then I lifted the colors uh, to show some snow over the trees. You can definitely use masking fluid for the cabin but I recommend just training yourself uh, to not use masking fluid and just avoid wetting the cabin. So you want to have your colors pre-diluted with water, so I don't have them pre-diluted with water yet, but this is Indigo, follow blue red shade, my Van Dyke Brown, and just in case I have leftovers of my burnt sienna and quin red. So first, I'm going to very quickly um, dilute these colors with water. There's my follow blue. So now, I'm going to start wetting the background. So I have my cl uh, clean water here. And I'm going to start from the top, but first I add a lot of water, a lot of water. I have washi tape and um, it's up to you if you want washi tape or not. Uh, it's much easier actually. I prefer to paint uh, when, I, when my paper is still in the block, but I run out of blocks. So that's the reason why I'm using this sheet. So I just had 22 by 30 and I just cut it out of a, a sheet this little piece. So you wet it for, I say three to four minutes, maybe even five minutes, just so your paper stays wet longer. There we go. I'm gonna grab a little more water. I want this to be more like a milk-like ratio. So there's my um, indigo follow blue, maybe some red. And I'm gonna start from the top here. And then I keep moving down. So it's like from left to right, left to right. Same colors, just to make it a little more intense on the top. There you go. And then I'm gonna keep going down. So I want to show a little bit more of that red. Good red in the middle. I also want it next to the cabin because I'm shaping the rooftop this way. Go. Around the rooftop. And then making sure my sky is nice and smooth. I have a nice balance here, so what I need to do is basically leave it and start working on the trees. Round eight, golden one, and I'm gonna grab like a cream top, Van Dyke brown here, indigo, and some of this follow blue. So I want to kind of follow what I did with my other painting. So I had these like bigger trees here. This is like a heavy cream to cream top, and 
you can have more water, so like heavy cream, for example, if you want to, uh, if you want the paint to spread more. It all depends. I like the composition in my first piece the most. I did like a similar painting and I still prefer the composition in my first one, the first ver version that I just shared with you. Here's some other trees. So you're kind of like first mapping it out, cream top like ratio, for this bottom part. And I keep glancing at my first piece because I really like the composition, but you need to really focus here. So I'm gonna, with the tip of my brush, I'm gonna grab this cream top, all these colors, and then go for these, um, for these, it's like the background trees that are a little darker. And it's like I'm adding it only on the one side of it, for example. And I'm gonna add a little more color here, for example, but I don't want all of them to be super tall. That's the thing too. Maybe this one will be a little taller. And there's that one in the background there. I actually do like it. That teeny tiny little tree that's not as covered. So you're not placing, like you're not trying to recreate every single um, branch because again, we're showing that there's some snow. So a rigger brush, for example, size two, this is my uh, rigger songbird. And what we're gonna do is look for some of these um, trees that are more covered in snow. Now, the timing, perfect timing to lift colors is ones that shine from the paper goes away. So we really need to make sure we're lifting the right time. This part is okay, this is better to lift here. So I'm just going to lift some of these and then even recreate, create like a couple more trees. Let's say they're really far in the background. That's too early there, but I could do like a little lifting here. And I am literally glancing at my first test piece because I just love the effect of that lifting and overall composition. Like, I feel like I added more brown in there and I do like that. And then just some branches. So I have to wait a couple more minutes here to, to lift on this side. And uh, if you really go fast, this is what it looks like. And I really like the quicker version actually a lot. It's like the composition is, I, I, it's just more spontaneous strokes, right? So I'm coming back to lift a little more, but I feel like I actually lifted enough and I don't want to do more, much more here, maybe over here. Paint the snow on the bottom. So we're going to grab a wet brush and wet the snow. Now we got to be careful and let's not touch the top part that we just painted. And then we're going to grab the same colors. I actually didn't grab um, brown for my sky. I forgot about that. But here's my, um, some of the phthalo blue. And then it's a little too intense. What I'm gonna do is grab a little water, dilute this with water, and go for that. But I do want some brown as well. And this, the bottom part, like this is much darker. When you look at the reference, you want quick strokes. That's why we didn't wet for too long because we're not gonna work too much on this. And it's okay if you didn't wet like the, every every single part of this little snow part, like you don't have to like, you can leave like paper dry areas just like I have it here, because that'll actually look pretty. So you would kind of like, it would feel like you're dry brushing. So we're gonna start by adding like a very light wash of some of the indigo, maybe some uh, Bondi Brown, but it's a lighter wash here. I wetted it up to here. So now I can go like this, up to this part. And then you don't have to connect the two pieces, like this part with this wall. And first of all, add more color darks right here for the shadows. And I really don't have much paint on my brush. 
and my idea is to do some dry brushing and we're also painting like wet on dry right wet on dry and dry brushing and I'm pressing harder now with the brush toward the paper just so this part is darker more like a between water milk like ratio of the Van Dyke brown and some of this um, indigo but this is a little too dark so I just grabbed a little water and this is for this part here the rooftop and now I need cream top again of the indigo Van Dyke brown and then we're gonna go on it on the inside here just let that paint spread and you're just kind of touching only some areas so the idea is that you really paint this quickly and then we can go back here with all that paint that we have on our brushes because maybe we can add some more color here so thank you so much for your time and let me know if you have any questions Thank you.